monument to gridiron grandeur. It has become both a symbol of struggle and the reason for it. One team controls its destiny. The Oregon Ducks. The other has to fight for it. The Stanford Cardinal. Today, the next fateful step must be taken to reach the game's most majestic cathedral, the Rose Bowl. We welcome you to Stanford Stadium. We're on the campus of Stanford University. Big game for the home team, but equally big for the visitors from Eugene, Oregon, as the Ducks have traveled fans well. Not much of a home field edge for the Stanford Cardinal. This is Pac-10 College Football Saturday, presented by Phillips HD. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. You know my partner, Petros Papadakis. And Petros, let's talk a little bit about the importance of this game in a big conference, a conference that's starting to get national recognition as maybe the best. Well, it's no doubt in my mind right now, Barry, the Pac-10 is playing the best football in the country. Explosive teams. Oregon's the hottest team in the country right now. Arizona's got a shot. Stanford, with one more win, becomes bowl eligible. And USC, still pretty good and still mathematically alive. This is a great conference, top to bottom. And in a good conference, we're going to see the best offense. The Oregon Ducks, so far, just unstoppable. Well, they have got it going, and it starts with the quarterback. It starts with Jeremiah Masoli. This guy was fifth string last year and became a 10-game starter. He makes great decisions. He's like a running back out there. He's got a strong arm and a cannon if he can see the right throwing lanes, and he's a great option player. They should put the game he played last week against USC in a time capsule as one of the great performances in the history of the Pac-10 for quarterbacks. This guy is a stud. Let's talk about Stanford. Their offense is a little bit different than Oregon. They want to pound you and pound you and then pound you some more. And they got a running back can do it. Well, they like to run power and they like to do it with Toby Gerhardt. And Toby Gerhardt is the quintessential back to take on a team like Oregon because Oregon's offense will have to watch him pound that defense again and again and again and keep Jeremiah Masoli off the field. He's a leading rusher in the Pac-10 for a reason, and the Pac-10 has got a lot of great backs. They do have a lot of great backs. Toby Gerhardt is one of them, but you know what? Pretty good running back on the other side of the field today, too, for the Oregon Ducks. With more on that, here's the third member of our broadcast team, Rebecca Harlow. Rebecca. Yes, that's right, Barry. Over the course of the last month, Oregon's and Michael James has exploded onto the national scene, putting up career numbers week after week after week. If you check this out, he's got 152, 154, and 183 rush yards against SC last week, of course. Now, I spoke to him, asked him, what is the key to your success? And he said, Jeremiah Masoli is so comfortable out there that he makes me comfortable. But at the end of the day, my goal is to just win the day. This is one kid who is hungry and humble, Barry. Very much like his own team. Humble, hungry, they want more coming off their most significant victory maybe ever last week against USC. They don't want to get off the gas here. The team that can stop the other team is going to win this game. When we come back, we'll take you to our studios with Darren Horton. Don't go away. Kickoff coming up. By the new Quiznos double cheese cheese steak. Mm, 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 mm. Toasty. We welcome you back to Stanford Stadium. Beautiful day for a ball game here, Stanford, Oregon. Before we get started, let's take you once more to the sideline. Rebecca Harlow with Jim Harbaugh. Rebecca. Coach Harbaugh, you say that this is the best tempo you faced in this Oregon offense. How do you slow these guys down? How do I see them? They're a great football team. We have to play our best football game of the year. Thanks, Coach. Thank All right, thanks very much, Rebecca. Jim Harbaugh, uh, very chatty, feels that his football team, when we talked to him yesterday, coming off its best half, the first half in their last game against ASU. Today's game presented in high definition and brought to you by Phillips HD. Chip Kelly, uh, boy, the last time we saw him, he was lower than a snake. Lost the game to Boise State. Had to sit his best player, arguably his best player, for the remainder of the season. A tough decision. Look at him now, Pete. 
Well, they have got it in the right direction. And he was calm. He knew that they had a very difficult task going to Boise. He knew that it did not end up well for him. That was his first time ever as a head coach. But look what he's done with his football team. He's focused these young gentlemen. He's got them going in the right direction. And they are right now, as we said in the open, the hottest team in football with one of the most explosive offensive we've ever seen. Love their offense. And Stanford, needless to say, will have its hands full today. You can't make a mistake. You make a mistake on defense, they make you pay. It's just that simple. And as you said at the beginning, it begins and ends with Jeremiah Masoli. We'll find out a lot about Stanford with this opening drive and what they can do offensively, pounding the Oregon defense. And this is a guy that can bring it, and Stanford will need good special teams play. Chris Awusu has already returned three touch three kickoffs for touchdowns. Two of them on the opening kickoff. Beard will be the kicker for Oregon. And let's see if they kick it to Awusu. Beard comes forward, drives this one, and Awusu will have a chance. Comes up, takes it at the six yard line. Got a little bit of a gap to the 30, 35 to the 40. Look out, midfield. Gonna be a race. He's at the 30 to the 20. Caught from behind and dropped at the 15 yard line. But you could not draw it up better for a start of a game if you were Jim Harbaugh. 77 yards. Well, the lane was there for Owusu, and all he had to do was use his extraordinary speed and accelerate through the holes. Great job by the Stanford kickoff return team staying on their blocks, knowing that Owusu could take advantage of that hole and just tripped up at the very end of the play, saving the touchdown is Terrell Irvin. So Andrew Luck will lead the Cardinal, starting at the 16-yard line of the Oregon Ducks. Gerhardt, the tailback, wailing in motion. And this is Gerhardt, right up the middle, moves the pile a little bit, picks up about four. As we said, this is Stanford football. They will pound you. And they have a very talented quarterback in Andrew Luck, a guy who seems to be getting better every week. First down yardage, I believe, a real key in this game. If Stanford can get four yards, as it did on that series, that just opens up everything, because Luck, very efficient off the play action. Barry, that's the key to their entire offense. They're going to run power. They're going to get behind their great fullback, Owen Marisic, and they are going to challenge Oregon physically. Second down and six. Play fake this time. Luck runs right into traffic. Had him loaded early. Almost picked. Bryson Littlejohn had his hands on that ball, and that was going to be a pick six. Has he, had he been able to hold on? Defensively for Stanford, presented by, or rather offensively, presented by Phillips. You saw the offensive line. Here are the skilled people. Owen Maurice, we've been talking about him all year. And he is a guy, if he gets a hat on you, he doesn't let you go. He's got great hips and great ability. He does it all for this Stanford offense. Really one of the most unsung players in the country. Really makes it work for the Cardinal. Third down and six. And second down, and left just rolled right in to the oncoming Defensive player for Oregon. That's a, there's a drop play with Gebhardt. That can do it. He'll stop for a loss. Well defended that time. T.J. Ward just filled the hole. Well, that was an example of Stanford doing what they had to do on first down and getting a pretty good gain. And then on second down, Kenny Rowe putting that giant hit on Andrew Luck. And then they solid it up on third down. Very good defensive series for Nick Aliotti's Stanford uh, Oregon defense. I'll say. Whitaker will come on and try a 29-yard field goal. He'll get Stanford on the board first, just a minute and a half into the ball game. It is on its way, and it is good. Not by much, but he'll take it. Let's go back and take a look at the kickoff return of Owusu, and he hit that hole perfectly, just the way you're supposed to. Well, Stanford's a very disciplined team, and they're very disciplined in the way they go about all their business, especially the return game. And you see, Owusu's the one with the speed and the acceleration and confidence with the football, but it's really the blocks. Jim Dre, Cleaner's out there, Amajoy's out there doing a great job. Will Powers, those guys holding blocks, driving forward, keeping their legs under them, not falling down in a situation like that, really gave Owusu time, and they held their blocks all the way down the field, all the way to midfield. Really well executed play for the Cardinal, but you know Jim Harbaugh wishes they could have capitalized with a touchdown. Stanford 10th in the Pac-10 in red zone offense.
And I think this Oregon defense, because there's so much conversation about their offense, I think it just doesn't get enough notice. No, it certainly doesn't. And the Oregon defense, even in Boise, really carried their team through the first three games, also against Purdue and also against Utah. And then the offense started going. They are the number one red zone defense in the Pac-10, the Ducks are. So Kenyon Barner will be the deep man, and this guy could scoot also. Kick is a short end of a run kick. It's going to be Barner at the eight-yard line. He gets a little gap and then closes down as he crosses the 30-yard line to about the 32-yard line. Offensively for the Oregon Ducks, it's a very young team, and you can see along the offensive line, no seniors on that offensive line. And the backs and receivers, only the one senior, Ed Dixon. I think he's going to be a key player in this game. There's your quarterback, Jeremiah Masoli. And Masoli is, and you, you mentioned earlier, the straw that stirs the drink. As he goes, so go the Ducks. Start with the trips right. Masoli, quick pass. Catch is made by Mayo, but converts the punt immediately and drops right at the line of scrimmage. Several Stanford players around him. Masoli. 18 touchdown runs, 19 touchdown passes, great balance, got a cannon arm, and has just made all the right decisions in the last few weeks. And he's a great leader. You heard Rebecca talking about it in the open. Really keeps it loose, really keeps these guys entertained, and keeps them having fun in this fast break offense. And here's James, comes off the wing this time. James trying to get the outside, can't do it. Nice play by Bo McNally, pickup of only about a yard. What Stanford is trying to do defensively, P, and Ron Lynn, the defensive coordinator, was talking to us about this, they don't want to cross the line of scrimmage on defense. They want to wait. They saw USC make that mistake, ends crashing up, leaving giant yawning holes for LaMichael James and Masoli to run through. Stanford doing a good job right now, hanging out at the line of scrimmage and running to the ball. They are third down and long. Right now, Oregon not running that hurry up. They go empty as they bring James out. Masoli straight back to pass as all day. Throws over the middle for Dixon. He complete. Dixon was open. Masoli missed him. Like you said, Barry, he was open. Delano Howell and Bo McNally, both Stanford safeties. Dixon came right between him and was open and really didn't stretch out for that ball. Masoli just missed him. And it was Dixon and Stanford are in Oregon's really real coming of age game, which was the one against California. Dixon showed. So Drew Terrell going to be the deep man to receive this punt. Long count. Line drive kick, short kick. Takes a big hop. Up in immediately is Terrell. Five defensive play that time by Barnum. And you just see the confidence of a guy like Kenyon Barner running the ball, returning the ball, and making tackles. Stanford has the ball and the lead. Three to nothing. 12.06 remaining. First quarter. Coach and then die. That's a football <laughs> coach. <laughs> He's a football man and just an inspirational guy to be around. And you can tell how much his players love him and how much they've responded to him. Look what they've done in his tenure at Stanford. Oh, and what he's done. It's just unbelievable. First down, Cardinal at the 25-yard line. Out of the eye formation. Play fake. Look at, uh, Luck is going to go up on first down. Throws deep, and that's going to be interference. Whalen, the intended receiver, he was tackled by Javis Lewis. Javis Lewis plays that rover position. For Oregon, they've had a lot of injuries in the secondary that they've had to overcome. Ryan Whalen, a very under control receiver, picks a shoulder That's and an just appearance. tries to take out Lewis. On the defense, number 14. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Whalen really tried to use his body and get between Lewis and the ball and did a great job of doing that. And Lewis had no choice but to take him down. Whalen, really a savvy wide receiver, began as a walk on here, outstanding student. 4.4 GPA coming out of high school. Walked onto the Stanford team, has become the most reliable receiver. First down at the 40 yard line. There's a give to Gebhardt. Gebhardt tries to bounce it outside and almost did. Picked up about four, and that is going to move him over the 1,000 yard mark. Toby Gerhardt over 1,000 yards 
on this season on this season. He had 994 coming in to this ball game. He's the Pac 10's leading rusher ahead of Jacquez Rogers and Javed Best, who we have coming up in the next game. California State leading rusher in the high school history of this fine state. One of the great running backs in the history of the state. Pretty impressive. Morgan shows blitz this time to pick it up. Lux pass is caught by Will for a first down. And right now the Stanford offense is clicking. Hazinger and Ward on the stop. A nice throw and a nice grab. Well, you mentioned the savviness of Ryan Whalen. He recognizes the bail coverage there and runs a nice short route, finds the place inside the zone, and for a, true, for a redshirt freshman, Andrew Luck recognizes right away the bail and the zone and gets the ball to Whalen. That's really good communication, especially for a redshirt freshman quarterback, a first-year guy. Stephon Taylor in a tailback now for Stanford. And this is Taylor. Taylor hit by the first man through a pickup of about two. T.J. Ward filled the hole nicely. Let's go down to the sideline once more. Rebecca Harlow with more on Jim Harbaugh. Rebecca? Yes, well, Barry, what's interesting about this start is it's exactly what Stanford expected. We talked to Harbaugh yesterday, and he said, I've never seen our team intimidated. In fact, there's definitely no fear around the locker room. There's a, there's a feeling that this is an opportunity for us to step it up in the Pac-10. They're certainly starting off that way, guys. Well, a huge game for them, of course. They got the five wins. They need one more to be bowl eligible, and it's not an easy road. Marisa goes in motion, power formation, play fake, Luck going to go up, unloads deep, he's got a man out there, and he overthrew the intended receiver, who was Kobe Fleener, a tight end, and he was there. Kobe Fleener, one of the fastest players on the Stanford offense, really can open up and run for a 250-pound guy, and it was Zach Clark, who can also play defensive end, coming from the inside and getting a big hit on Andrew Luck, otherwise that was a touchdown Cardinal. And I think he forced Luck to throw it a little bit earlier than he Absolutely would have Absolutely did. To. So now third down at eight. Gerhardt back at tailback. It's time they go out of the gun. Whalen, it's Griff Whalen in motion. Here's a blitz off the edge. It's picked up, Luck steps up, throws. Whalen makes the catch, first down Cardinal. That's Ryan Whalen on the catch. Cardinal have two Whalens who are receivers, not related, Griff and Ryan. John Boyette on the stop, and another Stanford first down, and another perfectly executed play. Well, look at the Whalen boys. You see the little pick play there, that's Griff Whalen, and Ryan Whalen comes right above that and finds another soft hole inside that Oregon zone, and Andrew Luck does a great job of sticking in there in the face of the blitz, which was picked up nicely and delivering the football. Stanford looks good and disciplined right now offensively. And that was a key, Jim Harbaugh told us yesterday when we spoke with him. Out of the gun once again, and the give is to Gerhardt. Gerhardt didn't get much this time. Might have gotten two. Brandon Bear in the center for Oregon makes the stop. Stanford coaches were talking about what sure tacklers the Oregon Ducks are also. Well, they have to be, and they've always had to be under Mike Bellotti and under Chip Kelly. The Oregon defense plays a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, and they have a lot of safety movement, a lot of guys creeping up to the line of scrimmage. That means one broken tackle, and you can go to the house. So you have to be a sure tackler. You have to hang on for dear life once you get a hold of somebody. Now, that's pretty hard to do when that guy is Toby Gerhardt, the captain of this Stanford offense. Stanford caught to go with two tight ends, two wide outs. Again, the Ducks show blitz. And again, they come with it. Again, it's picked up, and the pass is caught by Arusu inside the five-yard line, down to the two-yard line. Brilliant pass by Andrew Luck. Gain of 25, Talmadge Jackson, the saving tackle, and the Cardinal in business. Well, you said it right there, Barry. What a throw. Again, finding a hole in the zone. Great blitz pick up by Toby Gerhardt. And Luck just delivers that ball with great confidence, steps into the throw. And Owusu has had a little trouble catching the ball way downfield. He's able to secure that one. Nice route. Again, finding soft holes inside the duck zone. And just delivering the ball on the money. First and goal at the two-yard line. Give it to Maurice at the fullback, and he's going to be a little short. 
They've been running the fullback a little bit more on these short yardage situations. He hadn't had a carry until about two weeks ago. Well, I, I don't think there's any secret that Owen Marisic is Jim Harbaugh's favorite player. And he's the favorite player of all his teammates. Owen Marisic really is a guy that does everything right, according to his coach, Jim Harbaugh. And he shows up on film just watching. He, he does everything correctly. It's true. So get down there close to the goal line. You want to reward him a little bit. I Why think not? this one will go to Toby. Got a half yard to go. This is Gerhard. He's close. Touchdown. Well, the Stanford Cardinal out of the blocks very quickly. There's Maurice getting a nice block on the hip with the defender, getting a little push, and that's all Toby needs. You know, Stanford not great in the red zone, but inside the five-yard line with the run game that they have and the powerful people they have, you got to say, just keep on pounding it, and they'll score a touchdown. Well, so far, it's just as they draw it out. Driving the line is up, and it is good. And the 749 will play here in the first quarter. Stanford has taken a 10 to nothing lead, and guess what, folks? That lead is the biggest first quarter deficit for Oregon this year. We'll be back. This offense on it, pounding the football. This is going to be Barner at the one yard line. Trying to get to the other side of the field. He's got no place to go. A flag is down. And so is Barner at about the 14 yard line. So. This could uh, push Oregon even further back. Cheeky Amajui on the stop. I'm a joy, I beg your pardon, on the stop. On the return team, block below the waist, number 43, half the distance to the goal, first down. You know, this is something we saw plague Oregon earlier in the season when they were on shakier ground, special teams penalties, and a little bit of inconsistency on offense. Now, this is a Stanford defense that is beat up. Their best player, Eric Lord, is not out there. Clinton Snyder, their middle linebacker, one of their leaders, not out there. But they're hanging on so far. Let's see how long they can hold up against this powerful offense. Chris Simmons also not in the ball game. He is out for the day give this time on a reverse is to Holland. And Holland's got some room all the way out past the 25-yard line of the 27. Bo McNally makes the stop, a gain of 20. And that's become commonplace for these Oregon Ducks. I believe they had eight plays of 20 yards or more against USC last week. And that's a very simple end-around play with Holland coming around. One of the fastest guys in the country playing any position. Great track run. Oregon going to the hurry up now. Pass up the middle dropped by Holland right in his hands. Well, you saw what Holland could do, and then you also saw one of his limitations in two plays. There's a hard time staying focused throughout drives. And that time dropped the nice pass from Masoli. Holland with a beautiful touchdown catch against his old team, USC. Last week, Jameer Holland was a transfer from USC to Oregon. Inside the Pac-10 transfers don't happen all the time. He's starting to line the tight end up in the backfield. Now they throw to him. This is Dixon at the 30 yard line, trying to turn it upfield. He's going to get about five, maybe six yards. Will Powers runs him out. Give him eight yards. We're going to look at the action in the backfield with Jeremiah Masoli. Just so calm in the backfield, so confident with what he's doing, and flips it out to Ed Dixon. A nice little play by Chip Kelly's team, getting Dixon involved and getting a nice gain on second down. Now they're dealing with third and short. Yeah, that's a very different look than we've seen from these Oregon Ducks. They got a lot of wrinkles. Third down and two, and they give this time to James, and James squirms out of the tackle, gets the first down right about the 40-yard line. That Matt, was... Matt Masafilo missed it. Yeah, Matt Masafilo got his hands all over LaMichael James, and this is what really impresses me about the true freshman. Really impressed me last week watching him against USC. LaMichael James, when somebody gets their hands on him, that first contact that comes to him, his body really comes to life. And he really wiggles and shakes and turns his legs and finds a way to get away. And he's very explosive. So first down at the 40-yard line. And to get right up the gut. And this is James, and he is gone. Just like that, the Oregon Ducks have scored 60 yards.
Well, you just said it, P. I mean, they give you one look one time, another look the next time, and then they come right back against the grain, and there's nobody home. Well, it's like the parting of the sea right there. A great seal. Mark Asper doing a great job just blocking out, and then on the inside, Jordan Holmes, two great blocks, and Michael James is way too fast to give a hole like that to. Nobody playing deep, nobody helping out to take on Michael James, and he takes it right down the field vertical in a hurry. Five plays, 93 yards to go all of a minute and seven seconds, and just like that, it's a three-point game, and a flag is down. So we'll see about the penalty. Going to be offside against the Stanford Cardinal. And it'll be refused. The extra point will be good, and it is a 10 to 7 ball game. Offsides on the defense. Penalty is declined. Try is good. So 6.33 remaining I'm first quarter, field. and it's a shootout, and that's kind of what we expected. Stanford, 10 to 7. have the lead they do a great job of sticking to their identity and it's better for them when they have the lead to do that so they can continue to run the ball and run the clock Stanford 13th in the nation in time of possession so this is nothing new for them but, and especially against this Oregon team they want to take the air out of the way you can see Stanford's won 20 plays Oregon 8 and yet it's a 3 4 ball game right now Oregon can strike quickly big play here third down and 10 and they give it to Garrett Garrett taking people with him down to the five-yard line. It'll be close. Gain of 11, and I believe he's got another first down for the Cardinal. And what a gutsy play call that was. He ran right over Casey Matthews, and this is just sheer one-two. We call Toby Gerhardt a one-stop shot because he blocks, he can catch a ball, and he can do this for you. You see the hole open up, and he takes it there. He knows he doesn't have enough for the first down there until he steps right on the numbers of Casey Matthews, runs right over him, one of the best defenders on the Oregon D, and gets the first down because he wanted it more. Ducks do not have an answer for him so far. 11 carries, 56 yards. In the I formation, first down at the five-yard line, Gerhardt again. Tried to bounce it outside that time, a step from getting in, but a nice tackle that time defensively by Talmadge Jackson. Well, Toby needed to get underneath his guard. Andrew Phillips, who came around on the pole once again, Stanford running their power play. They can do it out of all kinds of different formations, very diversified with that play they like to run. And Toby needed to get underneath Andrew Phillips and said he got outside of him, and that's why the play didn't work. Stanford's going to go with its power package now as they bring an extra offensive lineman, James McGillicuddy, comes into the game. And this is a real power formation here. Now they're going to dray out of the backfield. They give it to Gerhardt. Gerhardt trying to cut it inside. Still on his feet, close to the end zone. Touchdown, Cardinal. And that's another one-two play. Just pound you. If you like power football, th this is the place. This is the place to see it. Toby Gerhardt getting behind his offensive line. Owen Marisic again. Andrew Phillips pulling around. Everybody on the same page. Everybody turning their legs. Everybody driving their feet. And Oregon right now, they're kind of a runaround defense, kind of a, a blitzing defense. They don't have an answer for what Stanford's doing. Not so far. And that should make the job that much easier for Andrew Luck. Series and the Cardinal leads again by 10. And for that guy right there, Toby Gerhardt, 60 yards. And we still have a minute and 33 seconds to play here in the first quarter. You see Marisic trying to find his way through. Phillips trying to find his way through. Toby does a great job getting behind those two blockers, Phillips and Marisic, and just keeping the legs driving, keeping his feet under him. And we talk about the incredible balance of Toby Gerhardt. For a guy that, that runs with so much balance, he always fall forward. You know, they, there's sometimes there's guys they run with, they run with balance and they're they're upright, but they they sometimes fall on their backside, and that's not what you want in a back. Toby Gerhardt just does a great job of, of falling forward every time he gets the football. Rarely loses yardage. Toby Gerhardt moving up on the touchdown numbers at Stanford as well. 
Tommy Vardell, who is somewhere in the house today. Touchdown, Tommy. One of my favorites as a young man. The other thing on that last play, Owen Marisa, and you've talked about this. He not only gets on a guy, he doesn't get off the guy. He moved Javis Lewis that time four yards into the end zone. It's leg drive, it's positioning, and it's desire. Here's Barner, comes up, takes this at about the seven yard line. They want to keep this on the field, it's apparent. And he brings it back to about the 30. Pretty good return. 22 yard return. Now Jeremiah Masoli will take over. You know, there's all that talk, of course, about the Heisman Trophy every year is the Heisman Trophy. And here's Tim Tebow, was the winner of the Heisman Trophy, but look at his numbers when compared to Jeremiah Masoli, and they're very favorable. Well, Jeremiah Masoli has just as much command of this Ducks offense as Tim Tebow has at Florida. Tim Tebow is a legendary football player, one of the greats of all time in college football, but you look at the numbers of what Masoli's been able to do, very comfortable. This comparison is brought to you by Days In. Here's Barner, and Barner gets a little bit of an angle and gets it going in the right direction across the 35, about the 36, a gain of six. They did have the nice touchdown run from Michael James, but the angles we're seeing from the Oregon offense so far in this game are not the sharp, exploded angles, exploitive angles that we saw against USC. Stanford doing a much better job staying at the line of scrimmage and playing assignment football. Quick toss this time to Mail, and Mail gets a step. He's got a first down and more across the 45, about the 47 yard line. Akam Udofia on the stop for the Cardinal, gain of 11. So, as fast as the Cardinal puts it up, Oregon comes right back. And you don't want to get these guys going. You don't want them to get into rhythm. They are a rhythm offense, and once Masoli starts to feel comfortable, look out. It's time to give to. And Michael James, and he gets out of the first tackle, but Stanford scrambles and stops him for a loss of about a yard on the play. He's tough, though. Nick Macaluso is starting for Clinton Snyder today. Snyder, a freak injury in practice the other day, and he is finished for the season. Leading tackler on the Stanford team is out. Nick Macaluso is going to start, and Owen Marisic is going to come in, we're told, and play a little bit of middle linebacker. Sometimes he just plays on the goal line. But he'll be in the game playing Mike Backer. Second down, 11. This is Masoli, and a quick toss to Dixon. He forgot to take the ball away. That'll be an incomplete pass. Might have had a little room. The Stanford defense doing their job. Staying at home, playing assignment football, not getting overexcited and flying up the football field, not leaving big holes for the Oregon offense. Right now, they're playing very disciplined, and they have the Ducks out of rhythm. This is a big third down and long for Jeremiah Masoli. This time, they bring two and a slot to the near side. Masoli runs up, might be checking off here. Now he flops James to his right side. And I think they got a freebie. Somebody jumped over the middle. The pass is almost intercepted. Thrown a little bit short. Chase Thomas, though, might have come across early. Offsides, defense number 93. Five yard penalty, remains third down. And we talked to Ron Lynn about this. We will play one on time down. Stanford defensive coordinator we discussed this there's a lot of thinking and a lot of decisiveness that has to go on on the defensive side of the ball when you're playing against Oregon you have to know your assignment and with the flop of the tailback I think the Stanford D got a little confused and jumped outside he heard the referee say they're gonna play an untimed down here solely with time now he steps up he'll run and now he throws to James and James cannot hang on incomplete that's where Masoli can really hurt you he really pulls up really quickly and then just kind of flips that ball he's got a lot of confidence and he plays with a lot of control out there but right now Stanford's D very impressive stepping up making the plays they need to make we come to the end of the first quarter and a great quarter for the home team Stanford leads it. a look at the scoreboard shows the Cardinals 17 and the Oregon Ducks 7 the Cardinal will have it when we come back
take a look at our E. Harmon and stats in the first quarter. And uh, Stanford, 128 yards of offense. Oregon still had 104, but remember, 60 of them came on that one touchdown run by LaMichael James. Gerhard, a couple of touchdowns, 60 yards on the ground. Pretty good. Well, Stanford's got 17 points right now, and they got it in the first quarter, and that is a statement in itself. Oregon only has given up 23 first quarter points all year. You see it right there. And Toby Gerhardt's making a statement right now for Pac-10 Player of the Year. Masoli, Quiz Rogers, Job at Best, they're all in the running. But Toby really showing out against the team we all believe was BCS bound. There he is again. Right side, now he steps inside, stays on the street. Great balance across the 20 to about the 21 yard line. Javis Lewis makes a shoestring tackle, a gain of seven. And Stanford doing just what it went into this game wanting to do on first down. Toby Gerhardt is running with a real purpose, and he always seems to. And Barry, you just think about all the great backs that are in the Bay Area this afternoon in college football. Toby Gerhardt, well, Michael James, yep. Shane Vereen, Javid Best, Jacquez Rogers, his brother James, Jeremiah Masoli, a great runner in his own right. This is wild. Oh, it's great. Play fake, not gonna go up. Blitz is picked up, but throws over the middle. Arusu has it. 48 yards. freshman Andrew Luck. What a beautiful throw by Luck dropping it in. Owusu putting his head down and using that speed. Talmadge Jackson, the third, right on top of it. All right, let's talk about the fearless predictions presented by Phillips HD. What Owusu has is speed and the acceleration. We've seen it a couple times in this game already. We saw the return to start out the game. And he has improved his hands so far in this football game, making two beautiful catches way downfield. Two catches for 65 yards. Plus, he's got 125 yards of kick return so far. Look out. Luck throws right open. Catch is made by Dre. First down, Stanford. Luck took a shot. Ball at the 10-yard line. That's the third tight end that Andrew Luck, who just seems perfect so far in this game, especially under pressure. That's a third tight end. He's involved. He's trying to get the ball to rule. Got into cleaner, got into Jim Dre. Really takes a big hit from Michael Clay, but that ball, you can't deliver it any better than that. Perfectly thrown ball under duress. And a first down Cardinal at the 13, call it the 12-yard line of the Oregon Ducks. Kind of a statement game for Toby Gerhardt. Statement game being made by the young quarterback also. No doubt. Did we get a timeout called here? Timeout. Stanford. That's their second charge timeout. So they'll take their second timeout. Time 13 out on the field. Three remaining in the half. Cardinal have it. Driving. last year kind of came out of nowhere last year and started making a whole bunch of plays very good strong safety and a very good tackle two minutes and change into the second quarter Stanford already with 203 yards of offense they have over a thousand yards of offense in their last two games so this is not a fluke out of the gun this time give it to Gerhardt again Gerhardt right up the gut gets it inside the 10 to about the seven yard line this is around the eight. But it's going to be a pickup of about five yards. That'll give you an idea what the Stanford offensive line is doing. And that gives Andrew Luck a, a pretty manageable third down here. You look at Andrew Luck and what he's done. Only three interceptions in 206 passes. And he's only been sacked five times that year. And certainly that's a credit to the offensive line, but it's also a credit to the boys of this young man. Six of ten today for 132 yards. There's not a better freshman quarterback in America. I believe that. It's at the eight-yard line, third down and six. They go out of the gun. And this time they play fake. Luck looks to the end zone. Got a man, Dre. Touchdown, Stanford. And a late flag comes in. But I, I'm not going 
Inspector. Well, Andrew Luck took a hit there, but delivered it perfectly. And just like we were saying, this kid's got size, the passer, strength. Number two on the defense. That penalty will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. It's rough in the That's passer on T.J. Ward. I mean, size, strength, accuracy, touch. Plus, he runs when necessary. He can really fire his legs. You see the ability to fake in the backfield. And a great catch that time by Jim Dre. But again, a perfectly delivered ball by Andrew Luck. Good coverage by John Boyette. You know, the other thing about that, we, we spoke of this earlier, and we were talking to the coaching staff about it, throwing across his body, coming one way, throwing back across his body. That is tough, tough, tough to do. Well, he can do it just because he has such great fundamentals. That's the roughing the passer. Not, not a huge hit, but threw the flag. But you saw him just turn his hips, deliver the ball. Very poised, very calm, can put touch on it can zip it in there. I, I don't see what this kid can't do. Well, the whole team has played brilliantly on the offensive end. You've got to give it up for the offensive line. They've been doing their job. Toby Gerhardt's been sensational. The receivers have done a job. And Andrew Luck. Yeah, we've seen them do this. We saw them come out in the first half against Arizona State with a similar purpose. But to do it against this Oregon team, which is the hottest, no argument, they are the hottest college football team in America, after that giant win over USC, Oregon coming down here riding a wave of success. And they have really run into a fundamentally disciplined, sound football team at Stanford. Well, what Stanford is, is doing has just not happened to the Ducks. Yeah, this is the most points versus Oregon in six weeks. This is really something. But they've done. It's not bad. against this Ducks defense, and that's exactly over and above everything else. Stanford wanted to kind of take the air out of the football, use the clock, not let the Oregon offense on the field. And not only done it, but they put points on themselves. And you're talking about rolling one way and throwing the other. Elway could do that, another Stanford yeah, quarterback, yeah. running left better than any quarterback ever. Now Luck really shows that ability, too. And this kick is going to go out of bounds. It's going to be Oregon. Great field position here. Right now, FreeCreditReport.com sideline report. Once more, here's Rebecca Harlow. Guys, welcome to the Jeremiah Masoli tailgate and Army. I spoke to him earlier this week, and he said, I have over 500 people coming to the game, and I love the support. This entire section up here is dedicated to Jeremiah. It is one group that is saying, hey, Oregon can fight right back into this game. There's lots of love, lots of support, and the family is just happy to be along for the ride, guys. All right, thanks very much. Not just the Masoli family that uh, is here in force, Oregon Rooters here in force. As you look around this stadium, P, I'd say, what, a third of the stadium is clad in yellow and green. Well, they've ridden that wave of success all the way down to the farm. Really nice to see a team that travels a crowd. Five-yard line, first down. So this ball will be marked at the 25. The reason for this is there was that penalty roughing the passer, which is assessed. That's right. This. And Stanford kickoffs were really continually pinning Kenyon Barner into the corner inside the five-yard line. And that time, it seemed like the penalty messed up their kicking sequence. But not as bad as it could have been. It would have been at the 40-yard line, but for that penalty. So Masoli will start at the 25. And throw, and he does. And able to slip the tackle that time was Lavoisier Tuane. Picked up about five. They're still searching for that rhythm on the Oregon side of the ball. No question. It looked like the, the Ducks tried to stretch the field in this game. Not going between the tackles quite as much. And here's Masoli up the middle. That time he had a gap. And look out. Masoli midfield to the 45 yard line. Gain of 25. So another big play. That's the third play of over 20 yards in this game for Oregon. Delano Howell makes what could have been a saving tackle. Well, watch Masoli. All the action is going to be going to the right. And Masoli is going to just stay in one place. And this is what makes him so dangerous, his ability to just stay there and wait for everything to open up. Quick screen this time to Davis. And Davis knocked out of bounds after a gain of about four. And now 
Oregon utilizing that hurry up as they get plays off very quickly. Well, once they start to get a rhythm, then Chip Kelly really goes for the throat with the hurry up offense, and they can go faster than anybody in the country because they practice faster than anybody in the country. The tempo is unbelievable. Ball at the 41 yard line of the Cardinal. And this is Masoli. Now he throws outside. And a catch is made by Tuane, and Tuane is going to be close to a first down at the 35-yard line. Well, that's really amazing, and that was that was defensed well by the Cardinal, but, but what an amazing play and a wrinkle off the read option that Oregon likes to run. The fake, Masoli looks like he's going to run it, and then just sprints outside and slings it out there to Tuane. Trips left this time. Masoli, now he looks downfield, throws up the middle, got a man, Dixon, first down at the 20, down to the 15-yard line, ball popped loose, but let's see. Officials are saying, we still have a signal, now they're saying Stanford football. Chris Evans made the recovery, we didn't even think Chris Evans was going to be playing today. Told us he got injured Thursday, they didn't expect him to play, and sure enough, he's not only out there, makes what might be a fumble recovery. We'll see if this gets reviewed. Well, Chris Evans with the tackle and the fumble recovery. Dixon doing a great job of showing up, and Masoli finds him right in the middle of the field. Dixon fighting for more yards, and that's just a great play. Absolutely. That great individual defensive play by Chris Evans, and Oregon had gotten a rhythm on offense, and it just stopped. Just like that. Now the Cardinal has it once again at the 15-yard line. Big break for Stanford. Give it to Garrett. Garrett's got a gap. Garrett lost the football. Ball's loose. Picked up by Oregon. Give it and take it. Spencer Pesinger makes the recovery for the Ducks. And they'll have it right back at the 29-yard line. Amazing sequence of plays. Toby Gerhardt mortified at the fumble. He is not a back that gives it up a lot. Makes a nice cut, and that's just a really good tackle by T.J. Ward. Put his helmet right on the ball, and sometimes as a running back, there's nothing you can do about that. That's great defense overcoming good offense. T.J. Ward popping that ball out, and Pacinger's the man on the spot picking it up. He's reset the game clock to 9 minutes and 56 seconds. Let's see how Chip Kelly adjusts this offense with this huge deficit. Boise loss was 19 to eight, and Oregon hasn't been jumped on like this since losing at USC on October 4th, 2008. This is a, this is a tough spot for them. This is Masoli this time. Fakes, steps up, throws to the end zone. Wide open, mail, touchdown. 29 yards, just like that. I'd keep my seatbelt buckled if I were you. I think this one's gonna be a bumpy ride. Everybody bought the fake, and Masoli was able to get outside and find Jeff Mayo deep in the end zone. Let's see if he hung on to the ball all the way through, because his momentum took him out of the end zone. He is wobbling it a little bit. Did he have it secured there? He's wearing white shoes, and the back of the end zone line is white. That's really interesting to look at here. They are gonna take a look at this. has to be irrefutable. That's going to be a tough one to overturn. Let's take a look again. There you see him bobbling the ball, and then he brings in his left hand to secure it. But is that toe out of bounds there? That is a very close call. That look wide open now. And you see what Masoli can do throwing the football when he has a clear path to throw it. Jeremiah Masoli, not the tallest player on the field, certainly for a quarterback, only 5'11". Delivers that ball very well to Mayo. And Mayo has possession there, but very difficult to tell. It reminds me of that one three-point shot back in the 80s that Kevin McHale made. <laughs> Couldn't tell where his shoes were on the three-point line. White shoes, white line. That's tough. That is tough. That's going to be a very difficult decision up in the replay booth. And they're going to take another look at it. Well, that's, that's right there. That's a tough one. Very tough. I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say that he's out. But I don't know if that's enough to overturn this call. I would think the call's going to stand. Stands, touchdown. 
And it does stand. It is a touchdown. So they say Mail did get the foot down. I think that was the right thing to do. It was really too close to reverse, I believe. And so just like that, 24 to 13, pending the extra point. You can see that blue sleeve, incidentally, being worn by the officials in this game and all over the Pac-10 Conference today. That is for prostate cancer awareness. Morgan Flint will try to add the 14th point here, make this a 10-point game once again. What a game. way and it is good and it is a 24 to 14 ball game now Stanford's lead again has been reduced to 10 948 remaining first half there's plenty more football to be played And a beautiful look at Hoover Tower overlooking the Stanford campus. And uh, he so far this ballgame might well be played in track shoes rather than football. Well, you look at it, 585 all-purpose yards, 38 points in 20 minutes. Here comes Wusu out of the end zone. At the 15, the 20. That's on a little late getting to the gap. Hits it out to the 28-yard line. Let's take a look at a direct TV game summary. Stanford, three touchdowns and a field goal in its first four possessions. Morgan allowed 24 points. That's they'd only been allowing 17 in the game, leading the Pac-10 conference in the possession. Of course, Stanford, that's what they want to do. Well, you look at the vaunted USC football program, 20 points in four quarters last week in Autzen Stadium. Stanford down here in Stanford Stadium, 24 points in just about 20 minutes. Unbelievable turnaround here. Neither team has the defensive answer so far. This time, right up the middle, and nothing doing. So Gerhardt getting nothing that time. Let's take a look at the fearless predictions presented by Phillips H. Neal, the Oregon side. Well, you look at Casey Matthews. He's had some trouble in this game corralling Toby Gerhardt, but he is the undisputed leader of this defense. Very productive all year, 51 tackles, and a very sure tackler. And of course, famous USC football family, dad, uncle, two brothers. Guys are all balling out today. <laughs> I mean, what right. Great, great family of, of football players. Out of the gun this time. Luck straight back, has time flagged down. Russo can't hang on. Here's a call. Offsides. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. It's a little bit of a break for the Cardinal. They get five against Oregon. You talked about that yardage, the amount of yardage so far in the ballgame. That computes to 30 yards a minute. <laughs> That's a lot of offense. Well, Toby Gerhardt's got 90 yards and counting. It'd be really interesting to see how Oregon plays the rest of this game. Barry, you referred to it earlier, the young Ducks. Only five of Oregon's 44 players on the two deep are seniors. These guys have to mature in a hurry and come back here. Gerhardt is going to play fake, and Luck is going to run. Luck is going to have the first down across the 45 to the 47-yard line, and that's borrowing a little something from the Oregon playbook. Well, a really good fake by Andrew Luck and, and for a Richard Freshman, and this guy has the entire package just like Toby Gerhardt does. Just great action, and of course, all eyes are always on Toby Gerhardt for what he can do, and, and that, that really does look like Morgan. You see the ball yeah. not moving at all, and, and you see that sometimes when you watch enough, enough tape on a team, you might just borrow a little something from him, and it looks like Jim Harbaugh did it right now. Work for first down, ball at the 46-yard line. Gerhardt again, right up the gut, gets a little gap, gets it down to the 45-yard line, a pickup of nine. Stanford getting it in big chunks, and you really got to give it up for the offensive line. Jonathan Martin, Andrew Phillips, Chase Beeler, David DeCastro, Chris Marinelli, the only senior on that offensive line. That time was Martin with the clear up. And you see the tough situation that Nick Aliotti, defensive coordinator for the Ducks, is in. Does he bring the safeties up? Does he bring Boyette up and T.J. Ward to try to stop? Toby Gerhardt, 
because if he does that, he's going to get hurt by the Stanford tight ends and the play action that Andrew Luck is able to run. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, the same issues that befall Stanford are befalling Oregon now. Stanford kind of taking what's there. This time to get the fullback on first down. Marisic will get it down to the 41-yard line. Marisic becoming more and more a part of the offense. And in fact, today, with the injury to Snyder, he's playing a little bit more defense, too. Marvo is telling us the guy walks around with two playbooks at all times. Offensive book and a defensive book. And he's a pre-med major. Oh, by the way. <laughs> and he's cracked three helmets this year. That's right. Just some great stories on both sides of the ball. This is this is turning out to be a great Pac-10 football game thus far. Absolutely. Lux straight back on first down, steps up, to throw, looking for Whalen. Right there at the top of your screen, Waylon taking off right down the numbers, and, and that ball is just put in there. It's you know, like Waylon didn't even see it. It's just will by Andrew Luck, the freshman, that that ball be cut. Great coverage by Talbot Jackson, the third. How do you tell the cover him any better? Couldn't have done it any better. First and goal at the three. Gerhard stopped it about the two yard line. Brandon Bear wrapped him up. A bear hug, if you will. Stanford going with that power package once again. Now they bring it out and they come with two tight ends. Stanford with seven offensive line on that last play. Second and goal, the ball just about the two yard line. Give it to Marisic, and Marisic fights for the end zone. He's close. Touchdown, Cardinal. on the door, Stanford answers. And they're going to continue to have to do that in this football game because the Oregon offense has got a little bit of rhythm going in the short yardage package for the Cardinal. A heavy dose of Owen Marisa carrying the ball on third and ones and near the goal line. A great job of Marisa taking a page out of Toby Gerhardt's book, keeping his legs going and getting right up into the line of scrimmage. Try for point by Whitaker is up and good, and it is a 31 to 14 Stanford lead. Right back to a 17 point advantage. When we come back, we'll take you to our College Football Saturday studio for the Geico Halftime Show with Darren Horton. by Johnson Batamosi. And with 27 seconds left, Stanford will get a chance to touch the football again. You have to really be impressed with Stanford's defense, especially since this Oregon team, now they did have a bye week, an extra week to prepare, but this Oregon team has got to be the most difficult team to prepare for in the country because of the tempo, the speed that they play at, the unique ability of their offense, you just can't simulate it with your scout team in practice. It's very difficult to do. Now, Jim Harbaugh really did give a lot of effort in simulating it, and it looks like it's paying off right now. Well, he did. He had a defensive back, Michael Thomas, who was a high school quarterback, very fast, run the scout team. This is Terrell. Terrell starts up the middle, gets a little gap to about the 38-yard line, 17 seconds remain. And very good special teams thus far in this game and Chip Kelly told us that these are the two best special teams playing teams in the Pac-10. Big hit there. Michael Clay. Well Stanford now has only one timeout remaining with 17 seconds. I mean stranger things have happened. You could throw this ball over the middle and I think they're just going to make a statement and try to run a little more power and just take some more football out of this Oregon team and then jog off. That's what it looks like. We'll give it to Gerhardt. Gerhardt going to be stopped at the 40-yard line. Gain of three. And that likely will be the last play of the first half, and it will be. And I have to remember for Stanford Cardinal fans, 
all-purpose yards. Stanford with 441 yards in the first 30 minutes of this ball game. And Oregon, not bad. They had 275 yards. Let's go down to the field right now. And Rebecca Harlow with Chip Kelly. Rebecca. Coach, Andrew Luck has been able to find soft holes all over the field. Your team always bounces back, but what do you want to see differently from your defense? Well, we got to generate some pressure on him and not let him sit back there, but he's a really good quarterback. We can't let him sit back there and throw the ball. Thanks, Coach. Right. Let's head on over to the Los Angeles studio for the Geico Halftime Show with Darren Horton. The score is Stanford 31 over Oregon 14. <laughs> the throwing of the quarterback Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck has really had a coming out party and Toby Gerhardt has stabilized this Stanford offense like he has all season. 110 rushing yards so far and we've only seen a half. He's over a thousand now and you look at what he's done in the record books in the history of Stanford football. Just a fantastic player. Those are our Geico eyes on stats and Oregon not trying to fall into that role that that Iowa played today. They lost. They fell from the ranks of the undefeated. Number three ranked Alabama is losing right now at LSU. Georgia Tech is losing. Notre Dame is losing. And we take a look at the BCS rankings. They're taking a beating today. Well, Florida is Florida, and we'll see them play a little later. Texas has got it going. Alabama right now in trouble, and LSU is still alive for the BCS championship in the SEC. Finally, it all caught up to Iowa. It is just a wild year, and right now, the Oregon Ducks are really in a pickle. They have to find a way to find the rhythm offensively and get some points on the board and stop Stanford. Well, no question about it. You heard Chip Kelly say that he's got to find a way to get to luck. He hasn't been able to do it. Then he's got to deal with Gerhardt. Fans, Land Rover wants to send you to the college bowl game of your choice. Go to LandRoverUSA.com to register for the road to the bowl sweepstakes. Do it today. With that, we are set to go to the second half. Andrew Luck trying to pick up right where he left off in the first half. Stanford will have to win a little bit, though. Oregon will have the ball first to start the second half. Chip Kelly said, got to put a little more, bit more pressure on Andrew Luck, but that's something that may be easier said than done when you got a running attack like Stanford has. And if you come after Luck, then you, what do you do about Toby Gerhardt? Double-edged sword for Stanford. And that's the balance that's really been a problem for Oregon. And that is the question they're going to have to answer. Do they bring the safeties up to stop Toby Gerhardt? Or do they leave him back there? Because if they bring the safeties up, they become exposed in the play action with Andrew Luck. Very tough decision. Here is the kickoff. And again, they drive it into the corner to Barnett. That is by design. Starts to go cross field and is going to be stopped. Almost slipped out of that tackle. Two guys missed it, but finally Delano Howell, who's a very solid tackler, makes the stop short of the 20-yard line. Oregon's possessions, as you can see, they were three and out of their first possession. Then that 60-yard touchdown run, that got things started. They had a one-play 29-yard drive following a Stanford fumble of a touchdown pass to Mail, and then punt, punt. Not very Oregon-like. They start the second half, their own 14-yard line. Give is to Michael James. He tries to cut it back and stepped out of one tackle, but not the second. He'll get about five on the play. Nick Bacaluso makes the stop. The numbers of Jeremiah Masoli, 95 total yards today, 78 yards passing, including a 29 yard touchdown. But compared to last week, just not getting it done. Well, they've got to find their own balance between Masoli and Michael James. Masoli going to throw, and this is caught by Tuane. Tuane slips one man, and then is cracked short of the first down at about the 23-yard line. Delano Howell, as you said, a very sure tackler there to make the stop for the Cardinal. And it's going to be third down and short. A big play early in the second half here for the Oregon Ducks. And a nice job by Lavoisier Tuane, just a sophomore, really coming on for the Ducks. Of course, his father, Van Tuane, played D-line four NFL seasons. He's really coming on, playing well out of Golden West Junior College in California. They need a yard on third down. And it is James, and James pops it again to the 35-yard line and stopped this time by Delano Howell. That was the same play that went 60 for a score. 
But a big first down across the 35 and the 36 for the Ducks. Well, it doesn't take a lot of space for LaMichael James to take off, and the hole was there because Shane Stoll, a little late closing down, just a true freshman. This time the Soldier's going to throw over the middle. Dixon makes the catch. Midfield, 45, taking people with him inside the Stanford 40-yard line. Bo McNally finally wrestles into the ground. Pickup of 24. This is what Oregon can do. I mean, they pick up yards in a hurry. Give this time to James. Not this time. He stopped with Chase Thomas. Thomas had a nice game so far. Great job by the front seven of Stanford forcing the handoff to LaMichael James, keeping it out of the hands of Jeremiah Masoli. And then not only do you force the handoff, but you have to go and make the play because this Oregon offense is so dangerous. Chase Thomas does a good job of wrapping up and making the tackle. Second down and 10. Masoli gonna throw again. Looks downfield, going for it all. Holland is out there, touchdown Ducks. 40 yards, just like that. Took him two minutes and 14 seconds. The Stanford safeties caught out of position. Bo McNally was in no man's land, and Jameer Holland way too fast. It's down to field in a hurry, and Masoli, nice throwing lane to find him. And you see Masoli rolling out. Had a throw to Jeff Nail in the first half on a similar rollout play. And that sun drench end zone finds Jameer Holland. Drive for point is up and good, and it did not take long. This is back to a 10-point ball game. 12.46 remaining third quarter. Stanford will have it for the first time in the second half when we come back. Welcome back to Stanford Stadium here in Stanford, California. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with Petros Papadakis and Rebecca Harlow. You're watching Pac-10 College Football Saturday, presented by Phillips HD. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to further action right after this message. Welcome back. Oregon now trails by 10. They have the ball again, coming off a very successful first possession of the second half. Well, they just came out of the locker room with authority. Two and a with a nice run and catch. Dixon found in the middle of the field by Masoli, and then Masoli getting real deep in the back of the end zone. Had a throw like that to Mail in the first half. That one went to Jameer Holland. And this Stanford defense, you just get the feeling they've been hanging on, hanging on, and their grip starting to slip a little bit. You saw those Quiznos stats, and I'm sure there's a little apprehension on the Stanford sideline right now. This is James. James cut back, dropped after a gain of about five. And Kamidofia makes the stop for Stanford. But again, good first down yardage. Real key in this game for both teams. Hurry up here, right to the line of scrimmage, second down at five. They're on a roll and they know it. This time Masoli on the keep. Masoli looked to pitch and will pick up close to a first down. Delano Howell on the stop for Stanford. And what you're starting to see, Barry, is the space. The space is being created. You have those big wide hash marks in the college game. Wonderfully conducive to a spread offense. And Chip Kelly, I, I really believe, is an offensive genius. And he's starting to be able to exploit the Stanford B, starting to create the space and starting to dictate pace. First down, the solo rolls right, going to throw, does, and it's incomplete behind the intended receiver, D.J. Davis. If there is one deficiency, on this Oregon offense, as far as personnel goes, they just don't have the game-breaking receivers that we've seen them have in the past. Jameer Holland has been a project for them, and he's doing some good things. Touchdown catch in this game, touchdown catch last week against USC. There you see DJ Davis out of Denver, Colorado. Two and A's coming on a little bit. Jeff Mayle, a long strider. He's their guy, their go-to. This is James again, not this time. Well played, turned inside that time. Chike Amajor. And now it's going to be third down and long for Oregon. So big play. They bring Holland to the near side. Holland just scored the touchdown. 
in the last series and they slot the tight end Dixon. That could be a difficult assignment for Stanford. And we're going to get a flag. By the snap, false start. Offense number 59, five yard penalty, remains third down. Well, they said number 59, but it is number 69, both ran. You see him right there, getting into his pass set a little early. Stanford in a nickel there, putting a nickel back on the tight end. Ed Dixon, Michael Thomas still in the game. So third down at 14 now. Masoli straight back. Now he rolls to his right. Now he throws downfield, and the flag is down. And we'll see who this goes against. I think this could go either way. It's Richard Sherman on Jeff Mail. And it looked like Mail grabbed him and pulled him. And it is. It's going to go against Oregon. That's an appearance. Offense, number 23. 15-yard penalty. Main third down. Mail just kind of waved Sherman by. Half the distance to the goal. Now, why wouldn't Stanford refuse this penalty? It's fourth and 14 if they refuse it. I think he caught the ball. Oh, he caught the ball. OK, I'll give you that. That would explain it. Nice catch by Mail. <laughs> and a great job by Jeremiah Masoli buying time and finding and trusting his receiver downfield but just a little too much physical contact from Mayo on Richard Sherman. So now third down and 26. Solely throws for Holland, and he can't hang on. Good coverage that time by Johnson Badalosi. The Ducks will have to give it back to the Cardinal. I think that's a key defensive series for Stanford. Giant defensive series, but it only means a bunch if Stanford can get the ball back offensively and do what they did in the first half and get some yards on first down, pound Toby Gerhardt, and then use the play action with their freshman quarterback, Andrew Luck. Rice in his own end zone. Terrell stands just short of midfield. Line drive, end over end kick. Takes a big hop. Terrell would just let it go. And it does take an Oregon roll. Down about the 43 yard line. It's time now for a Phillips HD game break. Let's check in with Darren Horton. Barry and Tuscaloosa third-ranked Alabama trailed at halftime, but opening drive of the third, Greg McElroy oh, yeah. to Darius Hanks, 21-yard touchdown, Crimson Tide rolling 10-7. By the way, Jordan Jefferson injured in this game. Guys? Darius Hanks, number 15. Thanks very much, Doran. Darren, rather, 10-point ball game here, 31-21. Bama now in front of LSU, as you heard. And this time, movement by Marisic. Not a good start for Stanford. Part of the snap, false start, 48, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Owen Marisic characterized as doing everything right by his coach, Jim Harbaugh does something wrong a first and it really is jumping off sides and one thing to go off sides if you're have a false start if you're an offensive lineman but you really have the luxury of seeing the ball at fullback shouldn't happen so first of 15 now for the Cardinal luck give it to Gerhardt Gerhardt's got a gap Gerhardt 45 midfield to the 45 of Oregon the 40 35 out of bounds to the 30 yard line huge play Davis Lewis runs him down. Well, Owen Marisa goes back to doing something right. 
walling off on the right edge, and then Toby Gerhardt making the cut inside underneath the guard, Andrew Phillips. And you see his ability to jump outside. He can do it, and he can get to the sideline pretty quickly. Again, a nice cut inside. Andrew Phillips with a good block on Spencer Pacinger. And Toby Gerhardt using the straight arm to get a few more yards. Big run for the Cardinals. Gain of 31. Stanford has it at the 31 of Oregon. Play fake. Luck going to go up on first down. Looking for it all. Looking for a Russo. He's got it. Touchdown, Cardinal. Well, we've been talking about Andrew Luck's willing, especially the ball way downfield to these receivers, willing it into their hands, willing catches. Chris Owusu didn't look like he expected this ball to come. His head, the ball was halfway there, and his head was not turned to Andrew Luck. He turns at the last second, looks up, and the ball's in his hands. And again, good coverage by Talmadge Jackson, but a better throw and a better catch. Absolutely. I mean, you couldn't ask him more of the defender, Jackson. Try for point, and Whitaker is up and good. And it is back to a 17-point ball game. Andrew Luck's happy. The Cardinals are happy. Jim Harbaugh is happy. And about half the crowd's happy. No choice but to catch it. It was going to hit him in the head. What a throw by Andrew Luck. And great adjustment by Owusu. And again, what do you tell Talmadge Jackson the third? He was right in position. Just couldn't make the play because the throw was too good. Twice now that's happened. Here's that kick into the corner again. Barner about a yard deep. He's going to come out. The 10 to 15. Drop again, short of the 20-yard line. Stanford special teams are really a factor in this game. Amajoy again makes the tackle. And Oregon's got to keep their foot on the gas. They have to keep their tempo going, and they have to keep the Stanford defense on their heels. The fact is, Stanford's offense is no fluke. No, I mean, look what they've done. They had 584 yards against Arizona, 473 yards against Arizona State a couple weeks ago, and 380 so far. And we're, <laughs> the third quarter's pretty young here on the farm against Oregon, and, and Oregon is still in a good position in this football game with the way they can play offense, and they're still in a good position in the Pac-10, even if they go on to lose this game, because they don't have any Pac-10 losses. There's a give to James. James coming on that big loop. Gets it up across the 25 to the 26, a gain of eight. Chiki Amajoy makes the stop. Last week, remember, against USC, 613 yards of offense. And the numbers today are not embarrassing. They've got 300 yards. That's a lot, 298 yards. But not nearly good enough so far. Here's Masoli on the keep, trying to kick it outside, get around Sherman, and he does, and gets it up to about the 39-yard line before running out of bounds. And the Ducks are doing a good job right now keeping the tempo going. Chip Kelly knows he's going to have to do it. He told Rebecca going into halftime that Andrew Luck was a great player and was going to be tough to stop. And right now, between Gerhardt and Luck, Oregon's having trouble, but they got to keep the foot on the gas offensively, keep their tempo going, because they're not out of this game. No, not by any means. So look at the throw this time. Over the middle, Dixon threw it behind him. Dixon was open. That's the play that just killed California. And that game, according to Chip Kelly and the coaching staff in Oregon, that was the, the game that really crystallized this Oregon offense. Well, in 2007, we saw Oregon with a terrible injury to Dennis Dixon in Arizona collapse at the end of the year when they were in the driver's seat. But this year, they, they don't have any Pac-10 losses like they did in 2007. They had that early loss to Cal. This time, James straight ahead, and he gets about three. Akon Udofia on the stop. Udofia has been very active on the down line defensively for Stanford so far today. Now third down and long again. James now over the 100 yard mark. Fourth week in a row for him. 107 yards. The blitz comes. Masoli throws the screen. Perfect play. Here's James. 45 midfield. 45 40. On his feet. It's going to be a foot race. 25 to the 20 to the 10. And knocked out of bounds at the three yard line by Michael Thomas. That was the perfect play at the perfect time. Well, Shane Scove, the freshman, 
really took off for Masoli. Masoli really got Scove to commit and then was able to dump it beautifully to LaMichael James and watch the acceleration by LaMichael James just flying through the hole, through the seam, breaking the tackle of Delano Howe. Almost taking it to the house. First and goal at the three, and stepping in is Masoli on the keeper. Nothing fancy, get the job done, and with the conversion, this will be a 10-point game once again. <laughs> what a game. And Stanford is scoring points with Oregon, and this Oregon offense, they've not been absolutely themselves, but a great fake again. Everybody commits to Barner, and Masoli sees the hole on the outside. Perfect read option run. Darian Weems a little banged up. Getting off the field, that's the reason for the delay. So now the try for point to make this a 10-point game once again. It is up and good. It was seven minutes and four seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's Stanford 38, Oregon 28. A real weapon, and there you see him right there. For the Cardinal, they need some good field position here, and they need to keep answering scores because I don't get the feeling that Jeremiah no. Masoli and Chip Kelly are going to stop. Here. They're not going to stop, and we're just about just past the midway point of the third quarter. Wow, long way to go in this game. Incidentally, the last time Stanford beat Oregon was up in Eugene in 2001. The score of that game was 49 to 42. Here's a Lusu. Gets the gap, bounces it outside in the 30. Stutter step, and he's surrounded by about the 33 yard line. Marvin Johnson, first man to him, and it has been the Chris Awusu shot. Well, here's the opening kick of the game, and Awusu just flying right down the numbers. He looks his best when he keeps those legs going, and then catching the ball brilliantly from his quarterback, Andrew Luck. He's been well covered all afternoon, but that hasn't stopped him. And there you see the great adjustment on the last touchdown for the Cardinal. Chris Uwusu really having a big day. So this time Stanford starts at the 32. It's back to a 10-point game. Just under seven minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Andrew Luck, the quarterback, here hard alongside him. They go out of the gun. Two tight ends, two wideouts right now. Momentarily. We have a stoppage. Shotgun formation on first down, a little different for the Cardinals. And now the Cardinal will go back and huddle up. So here we go again, first down at the 32-yard line. They remain in the gun. Give is to Gerhardt. Gerhardt is about five, maybe six yards on first down. Time now for Phillips HD game break. Once more, let's check in with Darren Horton. Darren. Very in Happy Valley, number 11, Penn State not happy. Ohio State's Terrell Pryor continues to show everyone he can use his arm. 60 yards to the Vera Posey. 16th ranked Buckeyes leading number 11, Penn State, 17-7 in the fourth. Thank you, Darren. Second and four here. Six yards on first down, picked up by Toby Gerhardt. That was the goal, as we've mentioned on several occasions. Now, Morgan moving around a lot defensively. Give it to Gerhardt again. Gerhardt, first down and more, busted in the secondary, and is stopped on a nice open field tackle at the 49 yard line by John Boyette. Boyette played great last week against SC. Hasn't missed a beat here, Mr. Freshman. John Boyette plays very angry, and you see T.J. Ward coming off the edge there on the run blitz. That doesn't help, though, because Toby Gerhardt gets into the line of scrimmage so quickly. If Toby Gerhardt breaks the tackle of John Boyette, he's going to the house because the other safety, Ward, was flying up the field. John Boyette, 5'10", 190 pounds, redshirt freshman, but plays a lot bigger than that. That man out of Napa, California, Napa High School. Stephon Taylor in backfield now for the Cardinal. First down to short of midfield. This is Taylor. Tried to cut it back. Saw a lot of green, but stopped before he got there by Spencer Pacinger. 
Well, the first headline brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% off brand names every day at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home. Yo. Ball right at midfield. Toby Gerhardt now 159 yards. Taylor remains in the game. Ducks showing blitz here. They back out of it, three-man rush. Luck throws over the middle. He's got a man, Owusu, who is cracked. Good job by Talman Jackson that time, and he wanted a lot of help from his friends, and Jackson is going to be a little slow to get up. A lot of contact down there. Owusu showed some nerve running into that. Still almost made the catch. This is a position that the Ducks can ill afford any more injuries. And you can see from the tape a real bang bang play, a great look at it. Talmadge Jackson there a little early, but not early enough to draw a flag. Hits Owusu in the back, but I think Jackson hurt himself on the fall. There it is in real speed. Went down hard. Chris Owusu almost came down with that ball. As it is, though, it's going to be a third down and nine for Stanford right in midfield. Jackson up on his feet and appears to be okay. Let's go to the sidelines. Here once more, Rebecca Harlow. Well, Barry, I've got to tell you that that last long run by LaMichael James matches the mood of the Oregon defense. I've been checking these guys out throughout the whole quarter, and there are zero signs of fatigue. In fact, talking to Chip Kelly, he says that of every team he's coached, this team works harder. They work until they're blue in the face. They're playing like it's easy right now. There's a mood of determination. These guys believe they can get right back into this ball game, Barry. Well, they are very much in the game. There's no question about it. Ten-point game. Stanford now looking at a third down and nine. Long, long way to go. This game is nowhere near over. The Oregon defense used to play in a lot of plays. Happened against Boise, happened against Purdue, and happened against Utah. Straight back. Goes Luck. Steps up. Throws. A loose has it at the 35-yard line. First down, Cardinal, 15 yards, and another big play by Andrew Luck. Well, that time, with Talmadge Jackson out of the game, John Boyette one-on-one -on -one against Owusu, and the Cardinal able to exploit that. Boyette giving Owusu a big cushion, and why not? Owusu's a lot faster than him, and a great throw by Andrew Luck getting it out there. Pretty easy throw and catch for the Cardinal. Give it up for the O-line for Stanford, too. Luck had all day. That was a rather slow developing play. And it all starts with their run game. Toby Gerhardt now broken his same single season rushing record of 1,139 yards in the set last year. Still Stephon Taylor, though. This is Taylor, steps out of the first tackle, gets his head down, gets a couple more, gain of close to three yards, two and a half or so. Pretty pleasant on the tackle for Oregon. Now Toby Gerhardt back into the Stanford lineup. It's Tyler Gaffney along with Gerhardt. So a little bit of a different look here now for the Cardinals. So now we've seen all three Stanford tailbacks. Stephen Taylor, Tyler Gaffney, Toby Gerhardt. There's Gaffney right here. All three backs in the game right now. First time they've lined up in this alignment. Play fake, Luck's gonna throw. And now he steps up, does throw, catch me. First down, Stefan Taylor on the receiving end of the 16 yard line. And once again, that was a little bit out of the Jeremiah Masoli playbook. Really coming under control was Luck sprinting out to the sideline. It really looks like he's going to tuck it. He's got all three tailbacks in the game, what they call a bone formation. Gets the Oregon defenders to commit, drops it in, just like Masoli did to Michael James. That time he drops it into Stefan Taylor, a huge recruit out of Mansfield, Texas. A true freshman. First down, Stanford at the 17-yard line. Now in the power eye. Gerhardt, right side. Breaks a tackle at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown, Cardinal! 17 yards for Toby Gerhardt. You can't stop him. Well, right now, Morgan can't stop the power play. Chase Beeler and 
Gerhardt center. Andrew Phillips once again pulling around. Gerhardt's going to get right underneath number 71. You see that. And it just doesn't look like Oregon has the desire <laughs> late in the third quarter now to bring down Toby Gerhardt. He took John Boyette for a ride. Sure not going to bring him down with arm tackles. And there were about three of them on that play. Try for point to add the 45th point by the Stanford Cardinal. And this is falling into that category of who to thunk it. We'll be back. Earhart's numbers, unbelievable. Hat trick, touchdowns. Still in the third quarter, 28 carries. <laughs> And he's not tired, I assure you. No, he's bringing it. They don't want to bring him down. He's getting stronger as the game goes on. He's really taking it to this Oregon defense, who's been opportunistic all year and played a lot of plays all year, like Le Rebecca was talking about. Well, in Stanford's five wins, they average 246 yards rushing. In their three losses, they average 138 yards rushing. Right now, they're just short of the 200-yard mark, and they lead by 17. Here's Barnett. 10, 15, 20. Slowed from behind and then stopped at the 24 yard line. And again, good special teams play by the Cardinal. Well, here we go. Watch Andrew Phillips come and pull around and Toby Gerhardt get in and then outside to the end zone. Watch the puller and watch Toby get right up underneath him. And there you see the hole. It's there and then it opens up to the outside for Toby Gerhardt. Just a brilliant piece of running and a brilliant piece of blocking and a play that Stanford runs to perfection. As well as Stanford runs the power, that's as well as Oregon runs that read option play. But right now, Stanford's getting the best of it. 28 carries and we're still in the third quarter for Gerhardt. Oregon starts at 25. Here's Holland on a reverse. Holland trying to get to the outside. He's got a lot of speed. Stutter steps and then he's dragged down as he crossed the 40 yard line. A good first down yardage pickup of 18 on the first carry of this series. Tom Candrew on the stop for the Cardinal. Allen with speed to burn. Started his college career at USC. Took it a long time to adapt to this Oregon system, and it's still a learning process for him. This is James, right side. James will pick up about five, maybe six on first down. So again, we've talked about first down yardage for Stanford, but they need four or five. That's what Oregon's getting also. Look back to Lusu on the stop. And the Michael James, you can see he's improved his personal best each of the last three games prior to this. Got a ways to go in this one. There he is again. Close to first down. First guy doesn't often get him. No, his body really comes to life that time. Macaluso making another stop. Well, Michael James getting a nice forward lean when he runs the ball. This guy's going to be a big time Pac 10 back for a long time, I get the feeling. And his backup's very good as well. Kenyon Barner. And Andre Crenshaw's pretty good back, too. And yes. so Remy Alston. They're loaded at the skill positions when it comes to running backs. Parker's in the ball game too. He now comes in motion. Masoli on the keep, wrapped up. Nice play to stay on that time by Thomas Kaiser. Tom Kaiser, a guy that Jim Harbaugh says plays with a lot of passion, staying home well, not chasing Barner on the end around fake and making the play, wrapping up Jeremiah Masoli. Stanford needs plays like that if they're going to hang on and beat this powerful Oregon offense. Oregon's still got to play Oregon State. They still have to play Arizona. They're in a good position for that BCS bid in the Pac-10, even with the loss here. Here's James this time. James keeps the feet moving and pushes the pile a little bit. He got something out of nothing. He'll gain about two. And again, it's going to be third down and long situation for the Oregon Ducks. Now, third and long has not really bothered either one of these teams very much. Barner comes into the ball game. James leaves. Barner, remember, playing on fresh legs here. And they don't drop off a whole lot with Barner in the back. This is Barner. And Barner's going to be short of the first down by about three yards. And it's kind of decision time here for Chip Kelly. 
I believe he'll go for it here. That's why they called the read option play on third down, just to get a good chunk of the yardage they needed. And they're still on the field and fourth down. Probably going to run the read option again. Stanford's got the power play. Morton's got the read option. So here we go. Fourth down. They need three. They give it to Barner. Aleta Masoli, and he stopped. And Stanford will take over. Huge play. That time, Masoli made the wrong read, kept the ball, and has dropped for about a three-yard loss. You've got to give all the credit to the Stanford defensive coordinator, Ron Lynn. Sending Michael Thomas on a run blitz. Michael Thomas found himself in the backfield, and he had an option to take out the running back for Masoli. Masoli keeps the ball. Thomas gets it. Great play. Defensive play of the game for the Cardinal. End of the third quarter. We'll be back. Spill before the ball snap here. Stanford starts with an empty backfield. All kinds of finger pointing. And now we're set to go. And we're going Gerhardt in motion. Now he winds up in the backfield. Play fake. Luck going up. He's got all day to throw it. He airs it out deep. He's looking for a loose. He overthrows everything. Playing with a lot of ease. Looks kind of like. Tony Pike back there right now, the Cincinnati quarterback. Andrew Luck just playing with a lot of ease, bouncing around back there, and all the time in the world to throw the football. Stanford using a lot of formations. First and 10 line brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop at the company that supports college football. Overstock.com at home with the O. That was only the second first down pass in the ball game by the Cardinal. So, you know, a different look. Not getting in any kind of pattern. Second out of 10, ball at the 40-yard line. Gearhart, flag down. Gearhart gets to midfield. Gain of five. We'll see about the flag. Spencer Payson on the tackle. Offsides. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Main second down. So they will take the penalty rather than burn the down. It'll be second and five. So that's the same as a first down run for five yards from Toby Gerhardt. Stanford gets away with the incomplete pass and the clock stoppage on first down. Little penalties like that don't seem like a huge deal. They don't seem like game changers, but they can really hurt you. And Oregon's had a lot of penalties so far. They have nine to Stanford's three. Gerhardt again, Gerhardt busted, he gets it down about the 46, first down, Cardinal. Another pickup of nine for Toby Gerhardt. T.J. Ward makes the stop. Toby a little bit slower to get to his feet that time. Well, he's he's burning clock, and that's what, that's what you do when you have a lead at the end of the game. You lay on the ground, you hold on to the ball, you wait for the official to ask for the ball, you take your time getting back to the huddle. Toby Gerhardt almost to 30 carries in this football game, and this is the time for him to shine. His work is not done. He's got to run this clock for his team. There's that power eye formation. That's the formation he scored the touchdown on. Give it to Gerhardt again. Gerhardt breaks it 40, 35. Taking people with him down to the 30-yard line. Boyan Lewis just could not bring him down. And Gerhardt with that run is going over the 200-yard mark. Well, he's having a career day. He is carrying his football team along with that offensive line. That time pulling around David DeCastro with a really strong block. Andrew Phillips has been great pulling all afternoon as well. He's making a case for all Pac-10. So is DeCastro, this Stanford offensive line. And Oregon, as good as they are defensively and as resilient as they have been all year and as great of a job as they've done, they are really wearing down. These guys are tired of tackling Toby Gerhardt. We've been talking about the running backs, of course, coming up after we get out of Dodge. You'll see Jackals Rogers. You'll see John Ness. You'll see Shane Vereen. And now you're looking at Taylor. And Taylor will get good first down yardage. He picks up nine on the first snap. And this time, Marvin Johnson going for right. And, you know, we thought maybe it might be the Stanford defense that's wearing out. But I'll tell you what, Oregon's looking more tired defensively than Stanford. 
Well, they're just taking football out of them. Right at the end of the first half, we saw Stanford line up, and you'd think they're just going to take a knee because there was 17 seconds or so left on the clock. What did they do? They ran power. They're continuing to lean on this Oregon defense, kind of like body punches in a boxing match. And you see the effects of it right now in the fourth quarter. Big push by the Stanford offensive line. Big yards for the Stanford backs, especially Gerhardt. They have it at the 22-yard line. Taylor remains the tailback. Give it to the fullback this time. He doesn't get anything. It's Catron getting a call for the first time, not Marisic. Josh Catron in at the fullback spot. Marisic has had to go both ways today, not the whole game, but they'll try to spot him offensively a little bit more, and as I say that, he comes right back into the ball game. Third down now, and about four. They are utilizing the clock. Four of seven on third downs are on the Cardinal in this game so far. Gebhardt back, with Gerhardt back in the ball game. Luck rolls to his right. Now he steps up. Now he's going to run. And he's going to be stopped short. He's not too a really shot from Kiko Alonso. And it'll be fourth down. And let's see what uh, Jim Harbaugh decides to do. We're talking about Harbaugh's kicker. And he said he's got 50, 51 yards in him. And I think that's exactly what they're going to do. It, is going to be a 40, about a 41 yarder from here. Already made one from 29. Nate Whitaker, the kicker, not a big guy, 5'9. He will try to give the Cardinal a 20 point lead. Snap placed on its way, plenty of distance, looks good, is good, and the Cardinal. Lead it 48 to 28. Oregon will have the ball. The clock is now the ally of Stanford. We're coming back. Barner at the one yard line. He's right back up the gut and he's dropped short of the 20 yard line. And again, you really got to give it up for what Stanford is doing on the defensive end on special teams. Well, they've been covering well, solid play, but look at Toby Gerhardt's day. Just a ridiculous display of power, balance, speed, skill, blocking up front. Now, Darren Nelson's got 4,033 career rushing yards. That's a record at Stanford. Toby would need to play the 2010 season to approach that mark, but he's having one of the best days I've ever seen a running back have as far as endurance and durability and ball security. Even though he had the fumble in the first half, that was more of a fluke fumble. A great play by T.J. Ward putting his helmet on the ball. But right now, Stanford taking the number eight team in the country to the wall. I'll say home. they are. It's Oregon now. Masoli rolls one way, has to throw across his body, does, and misses everybody. He had Chase Thomas right in his grill. And because of Stanford's offense possessing the ball the way they have, it's really given their defense an opportunity to move around, get some rest, play with some tempo, and just try their best to keep up with Oregon. Most telling stat in the game, other than the score, time of possession is 34 to 15 for Stanford. And James has stopped after game three. It's going to be third and long once again. And Stanford's defense is jacked up right now. Shane Scope. Made a couple of mistakes, but he's also made some big hits. Well, they need his speed. They need his speed and his explosion out on the field, and they'll take the mistakes because Stanford very beat up, very thin on the defensive side of the ball and not as athletic as most other teams in the Pac-10, but you see what they can do when they play together. Third and long. Solely with time throws underneath to James, and James reaching for the first down, and it will depend on the spot. Harbaugh doesn't like the spot. He's right there talking it over. I think they're going to measure this. 
If it is short, it will really bring about an interesting decision for Chip Kelly. Well, let's see. I think you're going to see him step out of bounds here. Yeah, right right there. there. And that is short. No question. Great look. Now the coaches up in the coaches box see that same replay. So they could say to Jim Harbaugh, challenge this. And they call it a first down. Now let's see what Harbaugh does here. Jim Harbaugh was right there. He had a great look at it himself, and he was pointing to the foot and the sideline to all the officials. Let's see if he decides to challenge it. Great effort by James to get the first down, stretching out. And I think he is going to challenge it. And I think... Jim Harbaugh may have an argument here. If that replay is to be believed, and now guys in the booth just down the row from us will uh, have it in their hands. Barry, we've seen the Ducks get big chunks of yardage in this game, but Stanford really challenging for inches now at the end of the game, doing a great job of competing with this very explosive offense, and that's just a beautiful look. You can see his foot's out of bounds. Definitely. And that ball is short. Yeah, they've got to respot this ball. The officials are going to take another look at this. Now, this one seems pretty clear to me. There's his foot. There it is. And you can see the ball clearly not at the first down mark, which is that orange triangle. And the entire Stanford coaching staff running over. Watch Jim Harbaugh right here. Watch him get animated when he sees that foot go out of bounds. Oh, he's, he's definitely got an argument, absolutely. Skull saw it too, and he's just a true freshman. Taking quite a while here. Now that's not as clear an angle as the other angle. So it there clearly just put us out of bounds. Clearly. Harder to tell with the white shoes, but there there was also a, a black bottom of those shoes that you could really clearly see the foot front part of Michael James' foot out of bounds. So we wait along with you. And it's taking, I would think, more time than it probably should. I think what they really want to determine is, was his foot actually down? And of course, they have to see where the ball is when his foot does touch out of bounds. There, his foot is down. It's on the ground. It is on the ground, and it's well, just about a yard, maybe more than a yard short. seems pretty indisputable to me. I, am I wrong? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he is out of bounds. I think they're trying to make sure where the spot is. But it certainly is taking a bit of a while. Well, we were talking to the replay officials actually before the game. And I know there's been so much consternation all around the country on officials' calls. And so they want to across the T's and dot the I's. They've been doing a fantastic job in the Pac-10 this year. Touchdown they looked at in the first half. I thought that was the absolute right call to leave that one be. The touchdown from Masoli to Jeff Mayle for Oregon. Maybe they're taking a vote. What do you think? I, I'm not sure. I, I, I am really not sure uh, about the delay. They're right. trying to find After the review, spot. It was determined that the runner went out of bounds at the 28 and a half yard line. 
Therefore, to be fourth down with a half a yard to go. Oh, that's exactly uh, what it is. They did get it right. They reversed the call. And another big fourth down for the Oregon Ducks. The last fourth down. Ron Lynn dialed up a blitz. Right. Michael Thomas off the edge, and he made a great play on Jeremiah Masoli. There he is right here. Let's see if they bring him again. This is actually almost a full yard from where the ball is spotted. Big play, play of the game for Oregon. They gave it to James. I don't know, I think he got it. We're gonna mark this at the 30-yard line if the linesmen both are standing, both the side judge and the linesman standing at the 30-yard line, so this will be a first down. Injured Oregon offensive lineman Carson York coming off the field. We saw Darian Weems limp off a little bit earlier in that last series. This has been an offensive line that really took a lot of heat after the loss at Boise, and they had not really come together against Purdue and Utah. And then they started to get their mojo working, and they've been great ever since. But just like Stanford, they can ill afford injuries up front. So it's a first out at the 30-yard line, 9.47 remaining. Stanford leads it by 20. Holland comes in motion. So they're going to throw. Throws to Holland. Holland dropped it, and he had plenty of room to run. He was probably thinking about where he was going before he caught the ball. Out of the shadows, too, into the sun, which could have made that an even more difficult catch. Tough situation coming out of the shadow to the sun, and I thought Masoli recognized Holland a little late being open. He's open then, and it takes about an extra half second for Masoli to get the ball out there. And coming out of the shadows into that sun, very difficult time of day to make that catch. It's the only part of the stadium that has any kind of sun right now. There's a quick pass, and this one is dropped by Dixon. Dixon's had a tough game. Same situation, too, coming out of the shadows into the sun. Masoli really looked like he committed to the run. We've seen Andrew Luck do that as well this afternoon. And then delivers it outside. Pretty heads-up play to find Dixon by Masoli. But again, just a tricky time of day here on the farm. And Dixon loses that ball. So again, a third down and long, third and ten. That's 4 of 11 in third down conversions. Not as high a percentage as they usually have. Masoli straight back. Now a roll away from pressure. Now he throws downfield. Got a man caught by Paulson. First down, Stanford 45-yard line. And a nice job to hang on by the tight end, David Paulson. A game of 25. And that's the other Oregon tight end who's having a pretty good year. A breakout season, in fact, for David Paulson. High school quarterback at Auburn, Washington, Riverside High School, and he's a good player. First catch of the game for Paulson. Oregon hustles to the line of scrimmage, ready to get another playoff. Masoli this time steps up, throws wide open, James down the sideline, and he dropped the football. That was going to be a touchdown. Frustration from Chip Kelly, frustration from Jeremiah Masoli. Again, LaMichael James, just a true freshman, gets lost on the wheel route. Richard Sherman loses him. It's his responsibility to get out there and make the play. Michael James had nothing but six points. Couldn't hang on. Second down, pump fake this time. Masoli rolls to his right, throws back across the grain. Catch made by Dixon. That's a first down inside the 30 and the 28-yard line. This one prior was just a flat drop. Masoli lays it out there perfectly, puts good touch on the ball. You have to do that when you got a running back out there. They're not used to catching the ball downfield. Puts it right one foot in front of the numbers for LaMichael James. Michael James, a great freshman player, just can't make the play. Ducks right back with a first down. Here comes a blitz, and the pass is caught by Barner. And again, Masoli, heads up play. He's going to pick up about six yards. Shane Scove is coming on the blitz. Couldn't quite get to Masoli, who completed the pass. A gain of six, and it's going to be second down and four. More tempo from Oregon. Masoli quickly now. Steps up, throws a drag pattern for Mayo, makes the catch. Gets around him at the 15, to the 10, to the 5. 
close to the touchdown, but they're going to mark it at about the two-yard line. Gain of 21. Don't go anywhere yet. This game is not anywhere near over. You see Stanford again just hanging on defensively. The tempo from Oregon and the rhythm really getting working. We've seen it in, in, we've seen it in spurts. It's this game coming on the drive route with Bale. Masoli finds it with the tempo, and he does a good job trying to pick his way to the end zone. Stanford's only got 10 men on the field right now. And to give the Barner touchdown. Stanford could not get the right combination of people out there. They had 10 people on the field. Well, that's what the tempo does to you. Really puts you out of sorts. Nakam Udofia had his arms on Barner, but Barner, just too much momentum, headed toward the end zone. Nice drive orchestrated by Jeremiah Masoli. 48 to 34 ball game now. Plenty of time left. Enough time that Stanford cannot try to sit on this lead. 8.05 remaining in the game. Back to a 13 point game. It's 48 to 35. Stanford, they'll have it when we come back. field on that touchdown play seven eight nine ten only ten Stanford Cardinals out there and that's not gonna do it <laughs> you no. need 11 guys You're out there short there every time you need 11 Stanford Cardinal out there to try to stop that run and they still had a good chance to stop Barner on the touchdown but too much confusion and that's what Oregon does with their tempo offensively but that line drive kick to a Wusu really put Stanford in a good position going forward here. 42-yard return by Awusu, who's run up huge yardage today. Here's Gerhardt once again. Gerhardt gets it going inside the 40-yard line. He'll get five, maybe six yards on first down. Stanford, remember, has blown leads before at Wake Forest. They had a horrendous fourth quarter at Arizona. They allowed the Wildcats to come back. Trying not to do that again. I think they're an improving team. I think they're getting better, and that's what Jim Harbaugh tells us. Stanford is really physically taking it to Oregon, unlike what USC did last week offensively and defensively. Stanford has really been up to the challenge, and they've kept their identity in this football game of playing physically, and they scored a lot of points doing that. Oregon has kept their identity as well. They've just been slower to come along offensively in the game. Second down and five. Gerhardt again. Gerhardt, not much this time. I have got two. It's going to be third down and three. Casey Matthews, whose name we've not called a lot today, is there on the stop. Well, a good job of wrapping up Gerhardt, just waiting for his friends to arrive. It'll be Gerhardt doing a great job of just driving his legs and eating up clock. This is a really big third down. So the numbers on Gerhardt. Right now, the fourth all-time single-game rushing mark, 208. See if the Cardinal keep their attitude here and continue to run the ball. This looks like a passing formation. Two tight ends. They bring Marisic up on the wing to the right side. And this is a keeper by Luck. And Luck, I don't think he's going to get there. He's going to be stopped about a half yard short. This is a real decision for Harbaugh. And knowing Jim Harbaugh, I, I'm guessing he's going to go here. Well, he's got an offensive line that's getting a great push so far. Pacinger, Terrell Turner making a nice stop on Luck. And it is fourth and short, and you're absolutely right, Barry. Stanford is going to go. They're bringing in their extra offensive linemen. They're going to go with seven offensive linemen, which kind of makes them the antithesis of the spread. They're going to try to get a push here. And they may call a timeout here. They're not in any hurry. Clock is stopped at 541. They need a little bit less than a yard. They have not had a lot of negative plays so far today. Oregon is challenging the ruling on the field as with respect to the spot. 
So Oregon will challenge. Chip Kelly thought the spot was a little too generous for Andrew Luck on that last quarterback keeper. Well, it's interesting because what this is doing actually is it's giving five minutes and 48 seconds, giving both five, Luck four, and Gerhardt an extra blow here. I think both of them, quite honestly, are a little bit gassed. There you see Luck. I don't think they missed that mark by much. Forward progress. I think the spot's pretty good. Chip Kelly just trying to get any edge that he can here. I mean, Stanford, right where they are, is kind of between a rock and a hard place. It seems to be a fairly accurate mark. Maybe it's a few inches one way or another. Well, it's understandable what Chip Kelly's doing. He's set up for a big fourth down here against a team that's really been pounding his defense all afternoon. After further review, the rolling on the field is confirmed. Therefore, there'll be a charge timeout to Oregon. That'll be their first charge timeout, and they will be they will have no further challenges in the game. That's a uh, that's a tough timeout to lose because they they trail right now by 13. There's 5:48 left. They need two scores. And even though they play fast, they may need that timeout. And the risk reward there with the challenge is not necessarily in Oregon's favor. If they move them back a little, Stanford presumably is only going to move back about a half yard, and they're still going to go for it because of the dominance of their offensive line and running backs. Not sure about that one. I mean, I understand what he was trying to do, but you still have Stanford going for it here on fourth down. Now, Oregon still has a chance to get a big stop here. Now, if you were really gutsy here, you throw it for the end zone. You go play fake and throw it for a touchdown. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Stanford doesn't run a play at all. Remember, we've talked about it in the past. Andrew Luck, a guy that can really use the cadence. Jim Harbaugh has referred to Andrew Luck saying he's got a megaphone at the line of scrimmage. Very loud, especially for a redshirt freshman quarterback. I try to draw him off here. Power formation. Gray in motion to the near side. And they give it to Gerhardt. He's got it in the middle. Down about the 33-yard line. Fancy just what they've been doing all day. They just ran their power play. Gerhardt again, slow to get up. I don't think Gerhardt has really hurt so much as he's just flat worn out. Time now for a Phillips HD game break. Once more, let's check in with Darren Horton. Darren. Barry, following the action in Stanford, will take our audience 40 or so miles north into Berkeley, where the Cal Bears host Oregon State. We'll kick that one off at 7 Eastern. Job at best, 15 total touchdowns, third most in the nation. Oregon State and Cal following Stanford and Oregon in about 10 minutes. Barry? Yeah, thanks, Darren. I think that's going to be a great football game, too. Barry. I'm not going to miss that one, either. Give this to Taylor, and Taylor is better. Scrimmage, maybe not a yard. Of course, Jacquez Rogers. You know the amazing thing about Jacquez Rogers? He's not only never lost a fumble, he's never spit the football up. No, ever. He always falls forward as well. He's like Toby Gerhardt, but considerably smaller and a lot more explosive. And Job at Best is a highlight reel waiting to happen. He is, he's got, I think, more upside than any of the other backs in the Pac-10 as far as the NFL goes, just because of his flat-out speed. And Job at Best is not a guy that's afraid to run the ball between the tackles. Jacquez Rogers between the tackles is brilliant as well. Those two guys are going to be a lot of fun to watch back. They got to go some to put on a better performance than the guy we're watching right here. Here's Toby Gerhardt again. Bounce it to the hot side inside the 30. to about the 27-yard line. He thought he had more that time. Marvin Johnson on the stop. Well, remind you, the first and 10 line is brought to you by Overstock.com. At Overstock.com, our award-winning customer service will make you feel at home with the O. Toby Gerhardt has come to work today. He's got that bulky brace on his left knee. He's on the move. He is, he is bringing it, and he's not stopping. There's that brace. It's almost like he's a quarterback or one of the old linemen with that thing on. But it doesn't seem to hamper his ability to explode up the football field. Remember he told us that day after game, he's always in the tub of ice. And every day. Every day. All That's week. Right. That's right. He's gonna have to, he, might have to, he might have to sleep in that tub of ice tonight. <laughs> 
Stanford using the clock really well. They'll let it run down here. They call a timeout with 3.41 remaining. They are looking at a third down and five. We'll jump off the track as well. We'll come back right after this. He stopped at about the 27 yard line. Michael Clay makes the stop. Take a look at our direct TV game summary. Gerhardt now 215 yards. John Volpe's 220 is the Stanford record 21 years ago. Stanford, six touchdowns in this game, a couple of field goals, and it's 12 possessions. And now they're in a fourth down situation. They are within field goal range for Whitaker. It's a timeout called by Stanford. Called by Oregon, I beg your pardon. That's Oregon's second timeout, third timeout. They've now used all their timeouts. Now, of course, Stanford just trying to get themselves bowl eligible, but that's something that's easier said than done with the schedule that Stanford faces. Oregon today, they need one win. They're ahead in this game by 13 points, 336 remaining. They're looking at a fourth down right now. The offense is still on the field, so you would have the feeling that perhaps they're going to go for it here. Then they play USC. We'll be with you for that one down at the Coliseum. Of course, the big game against California and the end of the season against Notre Dame. Now, Notre Dame was in trouble today against Navy. They lost. They did lose. Well, they're going to kick a field goal here. Whitaker, two for two. And this one's going to be a 40, almost 45 yards. Navy's got Charlie Weiss twice now. That's right. This one on its way. Does it have the direction? It does not. So Oregon will take over, trailing by 13. Three minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the game. Whitaker pulled this one off to the right side. Never did come back, and that gives Chip Kelly a glimmer of hope. He does not have a timeout remaining. Jim Harbaugh would like to add that one. His team leads by 13. Oregon, which we know can score quickly with the football. Masoli steps up, throws, James makes the catch. Stutter step, makes a man miss, midfield 45 out of bounds to 42 yard line. That did not take long. He got Richard Sherman completely turned around. Turned him around completely is right. Richard Sherman got lost. And Stanford just trying to hang on defensively right now, but a big chunk of yardage that time while Michael James makes up for that drop out on the edge in the last series for the Ducks. Here's Masoli back to pass. Avoided a tackle, avoids another, and now he gets something out of nothing and steps out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Stanford had two easy shots at him. Gain of 16, 48 yards in two plays, and only 22 seconds has come off the clock. Well, we've talked about all of these yards of offense for both teams. These defenses are both running on fumes. Masoli straight back, no pressure. Mayo makes the catch and then runs directly into Michael Thomas. Still a gain of about six yards. He was waiting that time for the for the drive route. Michael Thomas with a textbook tackle on Jeff Mayo. Masoli again. Masoli throws wide open. James misses it again. Tough, tough game for the Michael James. The redshirt freshman has now missed two touchdown catches. And now he's down on the ground to hold it on to his shoulder. Yeah, that's interesting. I thought he was just bemoaning the fact he missed that ball, and now it looks like it could be a lot worse than that. Well, here he is on the opposite sideline from the first drop he had, and that looked like he could get it, and then he goes down. They didn't see where he hurt his shoulder there. No. There's the other drop from the last series, but Oregon did go on to score a touchdown, but time is also against the Ducks. And here's LaMichael James. I think he'll be up and, and moving. Well, I think so. I didn't see where he hurt his shoulder. I didn't either, unless it was in a, in a frustration move. Here's another look at it. The ball's right in his hands. This is the ball, and then let's see how his arms go down. 
didn't look like he jammed his shoulder there, but hard to tell. So the end result of all of this is, is the third and five. You know, it's hard for running backs to raise their arms up in the passing game because they wear bigger pads, but those were two catchable balls for James. Sure looked like it. Got his hands on both of them. Soli straight back. Little slant for Davis. He's got room for the 10. He's going to get in. Five. Touchdown, Oregon. And it did not take long. 21 yard touchdown pass from Masoli to Davis. And don't go anywhere yet. And, and on that series, Stanford's defense clearly looked tired. Yeah, and they all just had a jailbreak there with the screen. Look at all the Stanford defenders flying into the backfield. Oregon does a great job getting their guys offensive line wise. Jordan Holmes out there to make the blocks and DJ Davis. Pretty nice path to the end zone. Well orchestrated drive by Jeremiah Masoli. And the drop again by LaMichael James doesn't hurt the nuts too much. No, it doesn't. Try for point is up a good 74 yards. And it only took 54 seconds. They don't have any timeouts left, but there's two minutes and 38 seconds left. Ostensibly, if Oregon gets a stop, they can get the ball back and be in a position where they can move it a little bit. And nice blocking downfield by all of the Oregon Ducks, receivers included. Junior Holland out there making nice plays. Big well, letdown for Oregon. I mean, after they played last week so well against USC, but they're coming on now. Big DCS implications in this game if Oregon goes down to Stanford, but they have a shot. Well, they do clearly have a shot now. Remember the last time, we mentioned this earlier, the last time Stanford defeated Oregon was up in Eugene back in 2001. Oregon was ranked number five in the country, and Stanford won it 49 to 42. Right now, 48 to 42 with 238 remaining. Well, Stanford can end this game with a few first downs with the power running game that they've had. And Oregon better be careful because we know that Andrew Luck can get involved in the play action and really hurt him with a ball down the field. Stanford anticipating an onside kick. They got the hands team out. Oregon bunching six players to the near side of the field right now. Two more, three more behind the kicker, and then only one player to the far side of the field. So they certainly are showing onside kick. They do the onside kick. It's not going to go the 10 yards. Stanford will fall on it. And they'll have it at the 38 yard line. The kick never did make the 10 yards. Jim Dre recovered it. Andrew Luck, the redshirt freshman, he did everything today, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't look like a freshman at all. This is the best young quarterback in the country, I believe, just watching him throw, just dropping dimes all over the field. Right into the hands of multiple different receivers. Owusu really had a good game. And right now for Stanford with great field position, one first down will end this game. They have it at the 38-yard line. Gerhardt, the tailback. This is Gerhardt. And Gerhardt pushes the pile to about 35. He'll get three. Oregon, remember, is out of timeout, so Stanford will milk this clock as much as possible. And as Petros pointed out, one first down should be enough. No matter what happens in this game, you've got to take your hat off to Stanford's defense. They made some great plays when they had to against what is the highest octane offense I've ever seen in Chip Kelly's Oregon offense. They look a lot like they did in 2007 when Dennis Dixon had it going, and Mike Bellotti was the head coach before Dixon got hurt against Arizona. They are just absolutely unstoppable. We've had 1,071 yards of offense in this game. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Gerhardt spins out of one tackle. It's down about the 32-yard line. Got a couple, maybe three. Ferris wrapped him up. Great second effort by Gerhardt. Coming up is going to be his most important carry of the game for all the great things he's done. Look at all the yards we've seen today. Just talking about it. Just two great offensive performances by two great very vastly different offenses and we've really seen the best of both worlds the best of the power running game and play action when it comes to stanford and the best of the spread world when it comes 
to Chip Kelly and what he can do with Jeremiah Masoli. And with that run, Toby Gerrard becomes the single game all time leader at Stanford. He's got 222 yards. That breaks the record of 220 yards set by John Holpe back in 1988. And he earned every one of them, I'll tell you that. And he's a very tired guy right now. Not breaking tackles quite as easily as he did earlier. No, but he's still running with a great purpose. Well, as soon as we're done here, we're going to take you over to Berkeley. Two great running backs you're going to be watching there, too. Oregon State and California, job at best. Jock Quiz Rogers. That's going to be a great game. That's, that's a real pick em game, in my opinion. Pac-10 has some unbelievable combinations this year for yardage. Look at James and Jacquez Rogers, Owusu and Toby Gerhardt and what they can do. Marine and Javid, best, best friends on that California team, and they share that backfield. Just so many guys that can play skill positions in the Pac-10. So many explosive players defensively and offensively. It's hard to say that anybody is playing better football and coaching better football than the Pac-10 right now at this point in 2009. Big play right here. Third down and five, a minute and three seconds. Stanford needs a first down to put this one in the back. They give it to Garrett. It's not going to make it. Got him on two. It's going to be fourth down now. Oregon does not have a timeout. Toby wanted that first down. He's disappointed. But a great job, T.J. Ward, Brandon Bear, coming up and really stopping any forward momentum that Toby Gerhardt had. And he is tired. We usually see him fall forward on plays like that, and he was knocked backwards. Great job by the Oregon defense. So 530 yards between Owusu and Gerhardt today. You saw those numbers at the average 286. 500 today. Now they will call a timeout with 15 seconds remaining. Now, do you just run another play? Do you try a field goal, which would make it a two-possession game? Well, if you punt it or a quick kick situation and it goes into the end zone, you put them on the 20. So it's about an 11-yard difference. If you run Gerhardt again, you know, you're likely to get the first down with the way he's been running the football, but he might just be out of gas. And if you try for the field goal, you give it to him right where the ball is. Right. Miss so, however, tough call. If you make it, the game's over. I mean, Toby Gerhardt, 38 carries. How's he gonna recover for the USC game next week? I mean, he's, they're gonna really have to take it easy on Toby Gerhardt in practice this week. The safe call is really to run Toby Gerhardt here. It looks like they're bringing the kicker out. That yeah, does. Well, this would put the game away. Now, of course, you also run Miss Corgan, historically, has been a very good team at blocking kicks. So you must consider that. This is a long kick, so it's going to have a low trajectory, just like we saw with Tennessee, Alabama a couple weeks back. Now they could fake this also. Well, we got 15 seconds to tell us the story. It's snapped, it's placed, it's kicked, it's on its way. It is good! And that's going to do it. A gutsy call, I think, by Jim Harbaugh. Very gutsy. Isn't that interesting? We talked to him yesterday. I thought they might pooch out of that field goal formation. We talked to him yesterday about the range of his kick where he said, I'm comfortable 50-51. Whitaker came through that time, missed one, but made up for it. Big celebration on the Stanford sideline. Oregon, they came back and fought hard in this football game. They're dejected. There you see Nate Whitaker, the junior, San Diego, California, St. Augustine High School. Numerous heroes here. Celebration on the Stanford sideline. Oregon, they came back and fought hard in this football game. They're dejected. There you see Nate Whitaker, the junior, San Diego, California, St. Augustine High School. Numerous heroes here today. Numerous heroes. Toby Gerhardt, the offensive line, Andrew Luck. You see Jim Harbaugh, the celebration on the sideline. 
This is the biggest win in the Harbaugh era. Here's a guy that loves his players, and he knocked off USC. The biggest win in the Harbaugh era in this decade was the 2007 victory at USC, 24 to 23. It was amazing as a 42-point underdog. This guy's building a resume of giant wins. This will go down as a program-changing win because the Cardinal just knocked off America's hottest team, and now they will be bowl eligible. Congratulations, Stanford. All you have to do is play USC next week. And you, know, and you know what? I mean, when you just look at matchups, Stanford matches up pretty well with USC. I honestly, going into this game, I thought the USC matchup, because we're going to be seeing that game too, was a better matchup for Stanford than this game was. Meantime, Barner stays on his feet to the 40 yard line, and the clock with that will stop in four seconds. But this was going to go into the books as a Stanford victory and a hard earned victory. Well, they had to do it. They had to really just pull the reins back on that Oregon offense. You weren't going to be able to stop it, but they were able to do enough with a depleted defense and not as athletic a guy as Oregon has. No question about that. They were able to pull the reins back on that Oregon offense, and really what they were able to do was pound the football, like we talked about in the open, hold the football, time of possession, keep Masoli on the sideline. So Masoli... We just throw it, well, he throws it underneath, and it's brought by Mayo, and that's going to be the game, and the Stanford student body, what there is of it here, will come on to the field in celebration, and uh, it's a good cause to celebrate. I mean, as we said, numerous heroes, and we like that guy right there, Toby Gerhardt, best single game rushing performance in history here at Stanford. You've got to give it up for the offensive line, consistent this entire game long. And how about Ron Lennon's defense? I know you look at the number, you put 42 on the board, you gave up almost 600 yards, but they made all the great plays. To the sidelines, Rebecca Harlow is with Jim Harbaugh. Rebecca! Coach, it's incredibly exciting about down here. The smash mouth that your team delivered today was outstanding. What can you say about this win? Just really proud of my players, really proud of the way they played. And the coaches, they did a great job. Great character, great integrity by our football team. When you look at Oregon last week, they beat USC today. You beat them. What can you say about the Pac-10 conference? Well, I mean, it's, it's the best conference in, uh, in college football. But you know, I think our, our football team expressed who we are today. And that's what I'm really proud about. Thanks, Coach. Very back to you. All right, thanks very much, Rebecca. Very excited, Jim Harbaugh, and with very good reason. We started to say you got to give it up for Ronlin. Even though you look at big numbers, they made plays when they had to make plays. That was what was important. Uh, the blitz on fourth down especially was a game changer. That was the defensive play of the game for Stanford. Fantastic. All right, so that's a wrap for us. Stanford wins it 51-42. We're going to Berkeley. Steve